novel. This is the kind of novel that is not only, you know, a masterpiece, an expression of genius, it's also terrifically fun to read. That description by American Eli Studies professor Stephen Whitfield is a curious one, given the novel he's talking about, Joseph Heller's iconic work Catch-22, centers on war. Whitfield says the book's novel take on such horrific subject matter is what made the book so groundbreaking when it was published. It adds something that was somewhat unusual in 1961, and that was a kind of comic perspective, that war is not only terrifying, war is not only cruel, war is not only wasteful, war in its own way can be funny. That helped alter sensibility in the 1960s, making it seem not only something to shiver from, but also something to laugh at. Whitfield is just one of the many researchers who has studied Catch-22's original manuscript at the Robert D. Farber Archives and Special Collections Department since Joseph Heller gave it to the university back in 1964. The manuscript is separated into a series of boxes filled with yellow legal pads that in turn are filled with line after line of longhand. There's also a large chart detailing the plot and characters of the novel. It's a gift that still excites Special Collections librarian Sarah Shoemaker. Oh, it's tremendous. This is such an important uh, piece of literary history. It's a hugely important manuscript. It's a book that was very significant to me when I first read it, and many people have a reaction to Catch-22. Many people have read it. Many people have heard of it. Many people use the expression Catch-22 without knowing that this is where it comes from. While the novel's title is ingrained into public consciousness today, a closer look at the manuscript, crammed with edits and even sections that are cut and taped together, reveals that Catch-22 wasn't Heller's original vision. Right around the time of publication, Leon Uris's novel Mila 18 was just about to come out. So to avoid any confusion, it was decided that the 18 in Catch-18 should be changed and I know that other numbers were considered as well, but 22 was deemed the funniest number by Heller's editor at Simon & Schuster. And in this case, you could even see where he crossed out Catch 18, which was the original title, and Catch 22 is written above it. The manuscript is not the only Catch-22 material that Joseph Heller donated to Brandeis. There's also a thick stack of correspondence from the book's fans, including actor Tony Curtis, who was angling to be in a future film adaptation, and renowned authors like John Steinbeck and a young Thomas Pynchon. All of these writers were able to grasp immediately the novelty of Joseph Heller's approach to war. And in that sense, it was only a matter of maybe a few years, maybe a decade, for ordinary readers to catch up with what Heller's fellow writers were able to perceive virtually at the beginning. This was something special. This was something revolutionary. This is something that changes our attitude both toward war uh, and, above all, how war is to be represented in American fiction. Even though Catch-22 is nearly 50 years old, Stephen Whitfield says the novel still resonates today, and it likely will well into the future. As long as there seems to be no way by which our species seems to avoid war, Catch-22 is going to speak to new generations of readers, probably even more readers than were available at the beginning of the 1960s when the novel came out. It takes on greater and deeper meanings and resonances decades after it was published, now down into the 21st century, even when its author is no longer alive and with us, um, than it had when it was first conceived and when it was first published. That makes for quite a story, by any name. Max Perlstein, Brandeis Now.